Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff, and this is part five of my six-part series on numeration systems throughout history. So far, in the first four uh, parts, we have studied the prehistoric tally system, the Egyptian system, the Roman system, and the Babylonian system. All of those different systems uh, arose either in the Middle East, North Africa, uh, or Europe. We're going to take a break from that part of the world and go all the way over to the New World and talk about what was going on over there. Because the Mayan civilization from Central America developed a numerical system that has remarkable similarity to the Babylonian system, even though those societies had been separated from each other but for millennia, many, many millennia. Remember that the, um, the, in the New World, they, there was no contact with the Europeans until 1492 when, uh, when Columbus came, aside from some brief visits by the Vikings, but they stayed all the way up in Greenland and Newfoundland and northern Canada and did not come down to where the Mayans were. So the amazing thing about a system that the Mayans came up with is it did have two similar characteristics to the Babylonian system. It had the idea of place value, which we talked about with the Babylonians, and it had the concept of a zero. Now, the, the Mayan system evolved between 300 and 900 AD, which puts it well past the, uh, the time of the Babylonians, although again, remember, these societies had no connection with each other, no contact whatsoever. So it's still incredibly remarkable that they came up with some very similar ideas. Where were the, the excuse me, the Mayans? We're done with the Babylonians. Where were the Mayans? So this area circled uh, in dark, or this area in dark orange here, represents the Mayan empire at its peak. So as you can see, it represents parts of Mexico, uh, it which is, uh, includes the Yucatan Peninsula up in through here. And it includes what is now Belize, and uh, Guatemala and parts of Honduras. So all those different areas in there. Let's take a look at the system that the Mayans came up with. So first of all, they used two basic systems, sy symbols, uh, a dot to represent one and a line segment to represent five. Now, if you remember back to the Babylonians, Babylonian numerals used a place value system based on groups of 60. So the analogy I used is suppose you have a group of a huge field of, of sheep and you want to count them. Well, count out 60 of them, put them in a pen, count out 60 more, put them in a pen, and then you can count the pens and how many sheep are left over. The Mayans had a similar idea except they based their counting system on groups of 20 instead of groups of 60. So we sometimes say that the Mayan system is a base 60 system and the, uh, excuse me, the Babylonian system is a base 60 system and the Mayan system is a base 20 system, sort of, sort of. You're gonna see a little bit of an odd uh, twist in here. Uh, the, the Mayans had a very clever idea. So just kind of bear that in mind that something funny is gonna happen. Now, for the numbers from one through 19, you simply just use the dots and the lines and you put them together. Uh, so in this sense, it has some semblance with the um, tally systems that we've looked at before and, and even the Egyptian system. For example, if you wanna represent the number four, you simply put four dots and you put them side by side like this. So that's the Mayan representation for four. But when you get to five, instead of putting a fifth dot, you put a horizontal line segment like that. If you want to represent a seven, well, that's two more than five. So what you do is you put a line segment for the five and then above it, you put two dots to represent six and seven. 13, you think of it this way, since the only symbols we have are one and five, you'd have to have two fives and you put those line segments one on top of the other and then above the line segments, you put three dots, and that represents 13. The largest number that you represent with only lines and dots would be 19. 
So let's think about that. Got to think about, well, how many fives would I need? Well, I need to get to 15. So I'd put three line segments to represent 15, and then four dots to get me up to 19, and that's how you would represent 19 in the Mayan system. Now, when we talked about the Babylonians, like I said before, we imagined counting sheep. Um, sheep didn't live in the New World, so the Mayans wouldn't know about sheep. But among many other wonderful things, they were uh, the first society to cultivate avocados. So we're going to talk about avocados. Now, again, in the Mayan system, we're basically going to look at groups of 20. So suppose you're looking at the number 53. If I were counting up to 53 avocados, I'd first of all count out 20 avocados and maybe I'd put them in a basket. So now I have a basket of 20 avocados and I would still have, let's see, if I put 20 in the basket, I've got 33 left. So I keep counting out more avocados and I end up finally with 42 baskets of 20. That would account for 40 of them, and then 13 individual, in this case, avocados. We'll just go with that. How would we represent that then in the Mayan system? Well, in the Mayan system, place value is represented vertically with individual units on the bottom. So we've gotten used to reading things from left to right, in the Mayan system, you read bottom to top. On the bottom, you put how many individual units you have. So if we've got 13 individual avocados, I would represent that by putting two line segments. That represents 10. And then three more avocados I'd represent with three dots. That would be my 13 individuals individual units, let's say, then I'd go above that and represent the groups of 20. So there are two baskets of 20. What you'll do is you leave a little bit of space, and then two is represented by simply two dots. Two dots well above the 13 would represent two uh, groups or baskets of 20. We could also refer to this as the twenties place. And the units would be in the units place. This is what the number 53 would look like in Mayan numerals. So remember, we're reading bottom to top. The individual units are on the bottom. So let's say we looked at the number 100. Well, again, we're putting things into baskets of 20. So you imagine you've got 100 avocados. You count out 20, you put them in a basket. Count out 20 more, put them in a basket. You would end up with five baskets of 20. And then the Mayans encountered exactly the same challenge that the Babylonians did. You've got your five groups of 20. And there are no individuals. No individual units. So I need some sort of placeholder to tell me that there aren't any there, and that means that we need to introduce the idea of a zero. So they have a, the Mayans had a symbol for zero. It looks a little bit elaborate. It's supposed to represent a conch shell. Looks a little bit like this. which if you live in Houston, like I do, that looks a little bit like the Astrodome, but uh, that's a conch shell. I'll show you a prettier one on the next page when we get there. This would represent that we have zero individuals, zero units, but then we have the five groups of 20. So up above that, where we wanna represent the groups of 20, we would put a symbol to represent five, and a five is represented by a single horizontal line. So this is the representation for the number 100 in introducing that placeholder, that zero value, because we had to have something to show that there, was no, there were no units. Okay, 
So, if you remember what happened with the Babylonians, when you've counted out 60 sheep, you put them in a pen. If you got to the place where you had tons and tons of pens, you would maybe take 60 pens and put a wall around it and have groups of 60 60s. So, in the Mayan system, they, they pull a surprise on us. First, they put the avocados, let's say, in baskets of 20. When you get a whole lot of baskets, rather than counting to 20 baskets and putting them, say, in a barrel, you only count to 18. So the next place value group is of 1820s. Here, by the way, is a more uh, nicer looking uh, picture of the conch shell that represents zero. Let's examine what this number we have in our example really means. So let's think about place value. I recommend start at the bottom. The bottom group is going to be your group of units. So this is my units place, my ones place, so to speak. Above that, you have a conch shell. That will be a group of its own right. And it's going to be my, let's call that my twenties place. Groups of 20, no groups of 20. Oh, excuse me, I made a bad mark there. Let me clean that up. This is my 20s place. The group above that, if we were exactly like we were with the Babylonians, we would say, oh, 20 20s, but it's 18 20s. 18 times 20. And the best thing to do is to go ahead and multiply 18 times 20 and represent that that means groups of 360s groups of 360s. So let's take a look at what this number represents. Going by place value, we have three groups of 360. So mathematically, we'd look at that as three times 360. You have no 20s, so zero groups of 20. And then finally, in the ones place, you'd have 10, 14. So that final place is 14. And the calculation you would do would be 3 times 360 plus 0 times 20 plus 14. And if you get your handy calculator out, which the Mayans didn't have, all they were, though they were very clever, you would get 1,094. So, like with the Babylonians, you have a 0 and you have place value. So the one thing about this that's kind of surprising is why did they choose, instead of saying 20 groups of 20, why did they do 18 20s instead of 20 20s? Well, we're not totally sure about that, but we have a pretty good theory. You might remember, if you've heard anything about Mayans at all, that the Mayans are incredibly famous for their calendars. They developed this calendar, which you can see right here, which unfortunately I don't know how to read, but it's uh, very elegant and very beautiful, uh, to represent years and dates. There was a big incident you might remember a few years ago where the Mayan calendar ran out of dates and people thought it would mean the end of time when it actually all it meant is it was time to buy a new calendar. So given that the Mayans were so fascinated with time and calendars, it might make sense to think that 360 would be a good size group because it's more or less, more or less, equal to the number of days in a year. Not exactly, of course, but close. So that might be why they went with 1820s instead of 360s, instead of uh, 2020s. What happens if you go beyond that? So you have your, your individual units and then you make groups of 20, so like 20, in a, 20 avocados in a basket, and then you go to groups of 18 times 20, like eight, get 18 baskets and put them all together to make 360 in a barrel. What if you need to go beyond that? Well, the next place value in the Mayan system is 20 times 18 times 20. Now, what happens from there, and we're not gonna get too carried away with this, is every new place value you go up truly is groups of 20, so the next place value would be 20 times 20 times 18 times 20. It's just that one place that goes out of 18. So let's look at this number here and see what it means. Again, read Mayan from the bottom. I'm gonna actually start this and then have you kind of finish it. 
Um, this would represent my units. And then above that, you'd have groups of 20. So this many groups of 20. And above that, you'd have groups of 18 times 20. Go ahead and do that calculation. It'll make it easier for you. So that's groups of 360. And then when you go above that and see another group, that would be groups of 20 times 18 times 20. And that number turns out to be 7,200. So I'm going to pause right here for just a second. And with just that little bit of a hint, try this on your own and see what number you come up with that this represents. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, let's take a look and see what we have. See if we got the same thing. My top group, now I can read bottom to top, bottom, uh, top to bottom, excuse me. The top group represents the number seven. So I have seven times 7,200, seven groups of 7,200. Below that, I have four, and that represents groups of 360. So four times 360. And below that, I have groups of 20. Two lines represent five each plus one, so that would be 11 groups of 20. And then we've got the conch shell down in the units place, which means that there's no units. So the calculation that we would have here would be seven times 7,200 plus four times 360 plus 11 times 20 plus zero, and that should give you 52,060. 52,060. That's what that Mayan number represents. Suppose you want to go the reverse direction and you start with a number that's in our modern system and you want to convert it, so to speak, to Mayan numerals. Well, what you do first is you focus on the place value and you have to think about what place value do you need. So let me again make a list of the place values that you have in Mayan numerals. You've got units, you've got 20s, you've got 18 times 20s, which is 360s, and you have 20s times 18 times 20, which is 7,200s. You need to think about which one of these place values is the biggest one you're going to need for whatever number you're given. And here's how we go with that. Uh, 7,200 is just too big. That's much bigger than 800. We don't need that. But 360 is not too big. So our first question we have to ask ourselves is basically this. How many groups of 360 are in 800? We did something very similar to this with the Babylonians last time. We answer that question by dividing 360 into 800. We have to do this the old-fashioned way with long division. We ask ourselves, how many times does 360 divide into 800? It goes twice. 2 times 360 is 720 with 80 left over. So that tells me that I have two groups of 360. 80s left over. What you do then is you go down a place value. We have our 360s first of all. And now we ask ourselves how many 20s are in 80? So how many groups of 20 are in 80? And that one's kind of easy. 20 divides into 80 four times. Nothing remainder, nothing remains. We'll have four groups of 20 and we'll have no units. So as I draw this, I'm going to draw it from bottom to top, starting in the units place. I have no units. So I'm going to start by drawing my little conch shell. And that would be my units place. Go above that to find out how many groups of 20 you need. You need four of those. So four groups of 20 would simply be four dots. Like that. 
And then you need to know how many 360s we have. We have two groups of 360s, so go above that. Again, this would be my 20s place, and this would be my 360s place. And that is what 800 would look like in my enumerals. One more. Let me let you try this one. I'm going to pause for a minute. You may want to hit pause on your video and try the number 669. Same process. See if you can convert that into my numerals. Okay, I'm back. So, um, it's pretty clear that we don't need to worry about the 7,200 place. That's too big. We can simply start with how many groups of 360 are in 669. We answer that question by dividing 360 into 669. That only goes one time. The difference we would have would be 9, 0, 309. 9 in the, first, in the right column, 0 in the middle, 3 in the left. So how many groups of 360 do we have? We have one. And then we ask, how many groups of 20? That's the next place value. So I divide 20 into 309. 20 goes into 30 once. Oh, you know what? I'm going to need a little bit more space. Let me move this. We'll put it over here. Uh, 20 goes into 309. 20 goes into 30 once. That would be 20 times with 10 left over. 20 goes into 109 five times, gives you 100, with nine left over. So how many groups of 20 do we have? 15. And then we have, at the very end, nine individual units. All right, let's see. So we have one group of 360, 15 groups of 20, nine units. Let's draw that in Mayan numerals. Again, we start with the bottom. We have to represent the nine units. That would be a line and four dots. That would represent the nine. That's my units. Then I go up a level and represent the number of 20s. There's 15 of those. So I can represent 15 using only lines. Leave enough space so it's obviously a different place value. 15 would be three horizontal lines like that. And then there's one group of 60. Make sure you don't put the dot right above the three lines or it'll look like part of the same group. Put it up well above that. And you have the one group of 360, the 15 groups of 20, and the nine single units so this is the Mayan representation for 669. One interesting fact about the Mayan system. Uh, the Mayan system is still a living system. It is used by the descendants of the Mayans uh, in Central America and Mexico. Uh, in fact, in Guatemala, uh, the Mayan system is still taught in schools so that the, uh, the culture is preserved from generation to generation. And so little kids in elementary schools in Guatemala learn all about the Mayan system. In the next video, we're going to go back to the old world, back over to the Middle East and Europe and North Africa, and see what happens after the Babylonians come along, because we will finally be down to the system we use day to day. Uh, we think of it as the modern system. It is actually better known as the Hindu-Arabic system.